another episode of the Dawson Grant Academy Talk Show. My name is Dawson Grant, a three-time Olympian, former board director of London 2012 Big Team. Each week, me and my guests explore the mindset, determination, and focus it takes to become an elite. Gain the insight to the world of sports, film, and more. Today's show is sponsored by Argon Utility Solution, your independent gas main service and meter installation specialist. To find out more about them, please click their link in the description below. Welcome to another episode of the Dawson Grant Academy Talk Show. And have I got a treat for you? Yes, I have. With a young artist, songwriter, is well known for a song called Barking. It got to number two in the charts in two, January 2018. No other than Roman Rochester, AK known as Rams. Yes, Dalton, how are you? I'd like to say thank you for accepting um, the invitation to come yeah. on the Academy Talk Show. So no, let's go into it then. That's cool. I, I can't believe it, you know? The success you had yeah. So quick, in 2018, did you believe that that song, or let's go back, how did you come up with the song, Barking? This this was natural. It's all natural. There was no like, okay, today I'm going to go to the studio. I'm going to make this song because I know this song is going to change my life or be the start to change in my life and other things. It was more just, yeah, I'm going to the studio and enjoying what I'm doing at this moment in time. You got to think of it. Mm. You thought it did change your life, though. What about yeah. your friends and your team? And you know, what, what was it like going through that transformation? The environment is it's, it's weird. That's the one that changes the most. Your environment, whether that's where you're living, what what car you might be driving, what where where the places you used to go to before. In what way, though? All right? changes. In what way? Because I know it changes. Yeah, in what way? Because obviously you've got the cars, yeah. you know, you're popular, um, it changes. women, so for, everybody for example, interested yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> for example, it changes. So, for example, like going to the places that you used to go to before, I would normally take the bus. Right. But it's not that you can't take the bus. It's more for safety reasons. It's more because you might get actually bombarded, but you don't think in your head you're going to get bombarded. I remember I went on the bus the first time after. I'm thinking, yeah, it's all calm, sitting down. Ru- Russia kids, it's literally. And it's like, you can't even do that no more. So it's just things like that. And in your environment, people start saying they might not be able to reach you anymore because they feel like you're unreachable because of the, the height you're at now or where you are in your life. They feel like so you're back, not... So let, let's go back to that in your life. So they, they, they mm. wouldn't be able to, sorry, say it again? They wouldn't be able to like contact you how they would before because they feel like everything's changed now. So it's not like they could call you before and they're definitely going to get an answer. They feel like, oh, he's busy because we see him doing these stuff now. They yeah. feel like, yeah, he's most probably forgotten about me. Right. Or well, that he's changed into some, but it's not the case. You're, it's now for you to still... Remain so how do you? In a so sense. how do you personally handle that? Because obviously you have changed, but yeah. into the work that you have to do, because you have a bigger responsibility. Yeah. Because you're, you have a huge fan base. So yeah. what is it like? Because you might be playing out in gigs, maybe to two or three hundred people. Now, what yeah. is the biggest platform you played on? Would you say since you, you, you um, Wembley yeah. Stadium, ninety thousand. Ninety thousand. So what was that like? Your that, first in going out. That, that was a learning curve. Even though it went wrong, that was the big change. That was the 360 turn for me, what made me realise. So, so what went wrong about that? Massive experience. So, Everybody's dream to kind of sing in front of a huge crowd. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The performance itself with the mic, the um, in-ears. And this is something that I'm new to. So right. I've never done this before. So I'm going out on a stadium platform, 90,000 fans. 90,000 people, there might be about, everybody knew the song in that stadium. 
So it's like you're going out to a platform you've never been out to before. So, so tell me about it. You know that song that you know, you know, off by art, you know the beat. What was it like with that yeah. pressure? Because obviously you're performing, your it's first lies big. What? How did you feel? Was you scared? It's, it's, diff- it's you're not even scared when you're perform- as an artist when you're performing. You're trying to engage with the crowd, but when you've never done that before, and you've never been able to like, for example, express yourself, pra- practice. Like in front of ninety thousand times. Yeah, that's your first time. So you, you, in your head, you're thinking something may go wrong. You know, you you don't know if it's gonna go perfectly fine, but you're just praying that it goes perfectly right. Because when they're in the stadium, it's a different matter. You have three minutes. You can't rewind time, pause, and say, "Cool, let me go again. Let me start again." It's not like that. It's more you're in with that time. You make sure you smash it from first that first second to that last last minute. And if it goes right, you're laughing. People are applauding you. If it goes wrong, you know that people are gonna mentally drain you now because something's gone wrong and they can laugh or they can, you know, they can yeah. take a bite at you. Yeah. So how did, how did, you, how did you handle that? Because obviously that's your first learning curve and yeah. it didn't go really well. So how do you recover? Because it's very important for people because even in my career, I've felt yeah, so yeah. many times. But you have to fail to achieve. But like it's how you, you handle do. that in life. You got to take it on the chin and own it. But you know, you how to. did you handle it? I must admit, the first week I said, you know what, I need to come off socials. Came off socials, but then the week after, I said there was an event in Birmingham, a Spotify event. It was one of like their first events where there was touring. I was doing Birmingham, London, Manchester, a big Spotify event, huge event. And I said, you know what? I'm going to perform there and show people, look, yeah, it went wrong, but I get back up and I still do it. Because any person that could have gone through that could have just said, you know what? This is it now. That's me done. I don't want to do this no more because I've been on the biggest platform there is and failed. But me, I was like, I'll be back there and I'll have my own set and perform my own song or have my own show. Yeah. And I'll where did smash it. Smashed it. So where did that come from? Because you know that the foundation, you jumped really good. Mm. Would you say that's your upbringing? You, you grew, the area you in trained you yeah. for that? Even though it's a big and massive yeah. scale. But it's, what would you say you as Ram, as a person? Because the success is the success, but it's always... Yeah. I, would, I would more say that comes from my household, seeing how my mum said, cool, I'm going to do this. Doesn't work. Okay, I'll do this. I'll do that. And then get to your destination still. Yes. So it's like, it's that, you know, your, your mentality. Mindset, saying, yeah. The mindset of saying, you know what, even if you don't do it now, it doesn't mean that you can't do it the year after or the year after that or tomorrow or, or today. Do you get what I'm saying? So it was, the, it was the, the mindset of, cool, it's gone wrong, but it's not the end of the world. We go again. So how do you feel to the youth now? Someone who just, you know, I keep saying sprung to fame so quick. Do you feel like you're a role model? Do you feel you, what would you give to the yeah. people today? I would, I would say I'm a, a role model for the youths that inspires them in a way that it's not about, even if you've got to fame very quickly, you can manage it and make sure you don't make these same mistakes that I have when reaching it fast. Because to what I would say to everybody, it seems fast, but then when you're looking at it from my point of view and my friend's point of view, it's like we've seen what he's been putting in. So we know that this ain't just happened overnight. This is what he's actually worked for and deserved. But it's like it's gone to a stage where it's higher than what we thought he would get to right so now. Quick. So yeah. quick. So that's what you can be honest with yourself with and say, right, this was very quick. I understand that. But it doesn't mean that I haven't been working and I've just got it by luck. Because there's people that can say, no, listen, the guy's been working. So yeah. when you're that person now, you need to remember that, bro. When you're getting there, always remember, yeah, you didn't just get this quick and laugh and think, oh, yeah, that means that person's rubbish now or that person's respect the peers because they've been working to get here. That's but then also understand you're not here for just any reason. God's put you here. And this is a trial period to show you where you can be. 
So don't just take it and think, yeah, I'm finished now. I'll put my feet back and that's it. You've still got lots of work to do. Definitely. You so when you was growing up, who did you look up to? Who was very influential people in your life? Was it family, uncle, aunt? It's, it's more, I would say it's more my mum. Being My mum being someone that raised me by herself, and my auntie and my grandma, it was literally, I was in a house surrounded by women. So I've always had that, that kind of respect. And, you know, I feel like that's a lot when you have a lot of respect for women and don't do certain things that happen in this, this life we live in today. Yeah. Because it then means you can respect a lot more of the stuff that you do when you see well, women go through this, women go through that. So it was them where I got my kind of, not let's say inspiration, but more, okay, cool. I see the strength that you guys have. I can adapt that into myself and apply that to whatever I'm doing as well and pay back to you, if that makes sense. Yeah, because I mean, when I was young, what they always say, behind every successful man is a, part, a strong woman. So yeah, it's, it's amazing. So you, was a, you was grew up in a single parent family. You didn't have both of your parents around you? Yeah, never, never, never had both of them. Never had both of them. I mean, I'm in a bit of more contact now, but that's yeah. 18 years later. So that's the main stage of who so made So how did you feel you? though? Oh, okay, you came, you grew up, you know, the strength mm. of women, female influence in your life. Mm. Did you did you miss your father in any way? Did you feel like you, you know, had to I, bond in? You get to a stage where you're like, you know what? He's not around. Adapt to it. You begin to just adapt to it and go to school and 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 understand raw. Well, like everybody else has their father, but I don't have mine. But it's cool. Like there's reasons. Maybe this is a part of the story that I get to tell later on, and it is. You can be successful because I'm yeah without that person who's meant to like necessarily shape you yeah. have those conversations that you can't have with your mom yes. that you need to get out of your head so did you did you have any male figures in your life uncles or aunts or would you I mean it's always now I you can't say I can't say I did no. yeah I can't say I did and I can't say I never there was most of my grandma's brother but it's different he's in Jamaica he's coming back and forth it's not like yeah oh, by the way, uncle, this is going on, what do I do? It was never that kind of comfortability that I was able to have with him. Right. So that's brilliant. So who did you look up to when you was youth then? So what, who did inspire you? Football, basketball, rugby? What, what inspired you? You know, I, the, the best person for me growing up was Thierry Henry. Whether that was on or off the pitch, it was for me his personality. It was when he was scoring goals. It was his determination. It was, for me, what... Everybody looked at him and he was a legend. His legacy, whether he steps back on that pitch again, has been left. He, you know, when you say his name, you, know, you don't even have to explain what he done. You just say Thierry Henry. Yeah, I know what he did. Yeah. Right. You understand? So that that's you what inspired me. That's what yeah. I see myself as. Oh, yeah? Really? Rams. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know what he did. yeah, yeah. yeah. He did a mad thing. Thierry Henry did a mad thing. So that's what I kind of got that thing of, I need to do that. Whether it's once or twice or three times, I need to do that where people can say my name and they'll be like, yeah, he did this. What is, have you got a plan for that? What is your plan for longevity? Yes, you made it very quick. Like yeah. Staying there is easy, but staying there is not so easy. So what is yeah, your plan? Thanks. Give us your plan. My plan is to always make sure I'm never forgotten. If you're never forgotten, then you're here for a long time. And how do you- And the you ways to, and the ways of, exactly, the way I plan to do that is by having precision about when I release my music, releasing it at the right times and know, working with the sound as well, what's going on. Because it's like, if the sound is, okay, drill right now, adapt to that sound, but make it your own still. If the sound has now gone back to singing, okay, you're doing that now. But when you're being diverse, make sure it's like, bro, this guy's talented. Not like he's trying to do this, but it's not working. Make sure you're putting all 100% into it and you can see that this is just 
a talented guy that just can't just do this and do that. He is meant to do all of these things. And this is a part of who he is. And he's adapting to everything. And you'll be here for the long run. I mean, I love it now because when I see music and what is your genre, would you say, of your... <sighs> what would you, what do you mean? What, explain a bit more. In terms of the music, is it rap, Afro beats, what, you know? How do you see yourself? I say, I it, you know, flavor? I don't like to be big headed, but I know what I'm good at. And I would say a bit of everything. I come with a bit of everything. Do you know how some football players, they come with pace and shooting yeah. and dribbling? I'll come with a bit of physical defending, dribbling, maybe just not the goalkeeping thing. <laughs> but I'll come, with, I'll come with everything because you, if I played you about five songs, every song is going to be different, different sound. And you're going to be thinking, you know, like, yeah, you're going to be thinking, oh, right, let me hear that one again. Okay, let me hear that one again. But that's what I love, love, what I love about you is that energy, that swagger. Mm. Was that swagger? Was that you? Yeah. Because I, I know when you got a swagger, people know because, you know, people want to be you. When they know they can't be yeah, you, yeah, they're going to yeah. hate you. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you're born with an energy that people could mm. sense that energy the way you move. It's true. To be, it's you true. Know? And, yeah. And you seem like, as a person, that I could imagine the banter with you and your friends, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's wicked, man. It's wicked. You got Like you were saying, the swagger, I feel like you just got to come with a balance of everything and make sure it's all on the right and then just be consistent and maintain that so that people can look at you and be like, yeah, that's our king. That's that's yeah. our Thierry Henry, but in the music. You know what I mean? And I'm, I mean, I love it. I love it, Rams, because when I was growing up, we had to look at the Americans. The Americans had the swagger. Yeah. And the British was a bit stiff, rigid. But when I mm. see the young generation of artists even though they yeah. say you don't know this, but you're bringing it. I know that you're learning as you're going along because things are happening. Yeah, 100%. With the money 100%. and so forth. But, you know, hoping only time we're told that you, you, um, you are level-headed and you can uplift yeah. people. Because, yeah. you know, 100%. you are a brand. You are a brand. Yeah. Even on that, Thornton, it's, I've, I've had to rebrand as well. Yeah. I've had to turn things around and rebrand. But that's what comes within music. You don't... Because I... Because I got there so fast to a level where I was like, bro, I wasn't even ready for this. You have to be true of yourself, look in the mirror and say, was I ready for this? I can say, no. I'm, I don't even know myself yet. So it's like, I'm here, but I'm, now I need to come here and reach there. So now I'm about here with where my music is or taking me to, and I'm not level with it. So now I'm thinking, bro, to get there, I need to rebrand. I need to figure out, okay, this is my style. Because it's easy to lose your head in this game and think, all right, everybody's driving this car. I want a Mercedes or a BMW. I want the biggest or the Lamborghini Euros or the, or the G-Wagon. Okay, I want to wear designer. Let me go Selfridges, Harrods, waste all my money. When, why don't you invest in yourself? Get a house. Wherever you're renting or buying, you've still got somewhere to live. And you can still say, this is what I have to show for myself. When you go on holiday and come back and you're going back to yours, not your, your mum's or your dad's. You're going back to yours. And then you've got other stuff like business. My business, my business idea is to open up a bowling alley because that's what I, I like doing. And that there, everybody goes bowling. It's for the families and friends. Everybody goes bowling. That's it's long. That will last forever. Yeah. That's and great. then you build on that. You feel me? Yeah. So it all counts as the rebound where you're like, okay, cool, this is what I'm doing now. This is when I pass my time, when I lay my head to rest, everybody's going to remember this is what I brought to the table. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. It's nice to see um, that there's your thought to the process and there's a mm. plan. There's a plan once you start it, or even if there wasn't, but there's a plan yeah. for longevity, which is important. Mm. So what would you give to up and coming artists in a sense of um, to handle a situation of being bullied yeah. by the fans, let's say? Do you know what? That's the hardest thing. Because you come into a game where you feel like, right, everyone's going to love you and respect you. But it's, that's not what it is. It, as much as it, it sounds like 
the best thing. You, there's wicked perks. But every time I sit down at the end of the end of the day, I think this is a competition. And it's people in the industry, your peers that are against you. And the outside fans that are judgmental on what you do. You cut your hair the same, why did he cut his hair for? Then it's like, bro, I've got to do this for them when really and truly you've got to do your things for yourself. And then people be like, we love this guy. But when, when you're doing, when they're, when that, I don't, I don't like to use the word bullying. I like to say people's opinions are getting the best of you. Yeah. That's when. You know, it's just their opinion. You can't exactly. control people's opinion. You can't control it. But it's when scary. there's so much opinions that are the same, oh, and that's when you see people yeah. like myself that begin to dip and the peak begins to get lower because you feel I like mean, it's getting the best of you. Human nature, but experience to me, mm. I've, I've had that before and I handle it. And I handle it by blocking yeah. out. I learned the art to block things out. As long as yeah. you don't put your hand on me, I'm good. Exactly. Put your hand on me, is a different. So yeah. and that's about life because, you know, for my, for, I tell you my first experiences, a world-class high jumper, I had to go to Germany and I got the yeah. money, you know, and yeah. took about, it was about 8,000 people and I wanted to fight, but can I really yeah. go to the country and fight the crowd? I couldn't. So I had to yeah. suck that in, handle it and I perform mm. and I did really well. So I understand like there's a lot of fools out there and there's a lot of people mm. going to be, you know, trying to put me down, but as long as they, they're not touching me, it's not a problem. And this is what you learn. You learn how to grow, to get stronger. And who's your real friends? And if, if people mm. hate me, no problem. It's down to them. You mm. know, and I know why they hate exactly. me. Exactly. Because if I wasn't me, I would hate myself as well. <laughs> so, you know, same. <laughs> so you got to use it in a positive way. Yeah. So I always try and use negative things in a positive way to uplift me and yeah. really look at True. my journey so far. And seeing you on your journey growing so quick, not understanding, thinking it's always going to be hunky dory, but you only mm. know your true friends is when you're back against the wall. And how you yeah. handle the situation is when you, you know, you fall down and how you yeah. pick yourself up. So you just got to keep mm. picking up yourself. I see, you know, like, I see it like, no, and I see it like, um, what was that, what was that um, thing in the playground? What, the swing bars, what the, I can't yeah. remember what they're called. I always said, when I came and I said, this is what this is like. You're just swinging and you have to get to the end and yeah. you might drop a couple of times. So when it's a competition, you've got to go back to the start, keep yeah. swinging again. Yeah. But it never ends, if that makes sense. You always well, drop, you go again, you go again. Because I because say to people what I love, easy. definitely, I love your lifestyle because I mean, if you look in life, let's be honest, you have the man who wants to go to work and do good and be inspired. Mm. You have the man who wants to go on road and make money and be a roadman. And yeah, you're gonna yeah. be successful. You're gonna make a lot of money, but know the field that you're around and you're with. And you know, yeah. let's be honest, when things are going well, you know, you're, you're just flashing the cash. Everybody's your friends. Mm -hmm. When it goes wrong, you don't see them. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you know, there's two things that happen. You it's might true. have beef or you're gonna get locked up. So it's know true. what you're getting into. If you hang around with problems, problems come your way. If you hang around yeah. with good people, Good people come your way. It's that mm -hmm. simple. And you know, it's hard in life because you only know when the chips are down and that's when you really yeah. know. That's that kind of little percentage you have to hold back and understand that. You, know, you have to hold back. So talk is cheap, actions is real. So don't judge someone what they say, judge them by what they do. And then you know real people. Actions speaks louder than words. So always mm -hmm. watch how they move. You know, so um, what's your plan now? Is there any new songs or? Yeah, I mean, I just I just released one with one of my good friends from school, SK called Nella. And then from there on, it's just another. I said to myself, I want to rebrand again. I want to, now I know who I am. I want to stick with that. Whether it's the hairstyle, the clothes, what I wear what I'm doing, maintain yeah, I'm that. Yeah, I'm 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 liking it. I'm yeah, liking man. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. said, I'm going to let this grow now. Just stick with this. Let people understand this is who I am now. I know who I am. They can learn me even more properly because that's the one thing I feel like is powerful. People need to know kind of, not too much about you, but they need to know enough. And they need to learn you and be like, yeah, 
this is our artist. This is who he is. He comes with this. Calm. I love it. So it's more that. And just, I feel like the reason I got to a place where I got to was just enjoying and being real with myself and doing things that I liked. Even though when you get to a stage, you know, the one they say, raw, you need to have a massive shoot, you need to do this, you need a big budget. But then if you think about it, if that's the process to get there, why does the process change now to get you to a higher level? If I got myself to a place where it was like, I didn't need all of that. So how can you tell me? So now it's like, okay, my theory of it now is I'm doing what I used to do back then. Not Keep the sound, but I'm keeping it real. That's how you're going to see me get back to a stage. Because right? I can show you that I don't need to do this. I don't need to do what they do. I'm doing what Rams does. That's right. I love and, I'll, that. and I'll be there. So can we see you on screen? Can I see you in a movie or something? Because Yeah. I want to I wanna act. I want to do all this stuff. And I say to myself, it's a matter of time because I personally think that one thing I would say to artists as well, young artists that are aspiring to be in the music industry or whatever you want to do is that, and I'm sure you can agree on this, is that when you release a song or you do something, it's a high job, you fail, you don't come first, second or third. You think, oh, this is it. I'm never going to come first. Or I'm never going to get a million views again. So then you forget in a slap. You forget everything that's happened and how you've got there. And then it comes again and you, you fail again. And then you come and it's like, boom, first million views. Like, Rah, you feel good about yourself. Then you start to remember like, Rah, this is simple. This is, this is easy. Then you do it again and it happens again and you fail. That there is the most difficult thing to do with after succeeding because it's like, why am I failing now if I was just doing well? But the mindset that you have to have is that if you got to this place before, of course you can get there again. Yeah, it's it's easier said than done, but you're not doing the right thing. Or there's a reason. There's a reason. I said that to Linford Christie because I was interviewing him as well. And I said, what yeah. goes into easy is not easy. And mm -hmm. the thing about this is that when you're talented and things come very quickly, you can't appreciate it. And you only appreciate mm -hmm. when it goes wrong. And that's yeah, the thing yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You're trying to find something that you've done natural. What you need to yeah. do really is actually learn from your experiences. So sometimes you have to go through yeah. things to look back and then, mm -hmm. okay, that's what I've done. And it's nice to know mm -hmm. that that's what you're doing now. Yes. You've got experience and you're gonna look back at yourself and look it's back true. at those and grow from that. And now when you, mm -hmm. you know, when you ramps, which I can see, um, mature, level-headed, and yeah. people look that. And that's what we need. We need real role models. Not it's people true. going out there and feeding the wrong information to the youth that, you know, it's not attainable, that they can't reach and they can't mm -hmm. achieve. So you can tell them what real success is like and someone who can reflect from your, you know, upbringing and, you know, say that I can achieve. There's no yeah, point yeah, yeah. having a person who's had a silver spoon in their mouth. Well, Rams had no spoon and he became successful. And it's true. You know, carry on and keep on inspiring people, please. I'd like mm -hmm. to give you one question. Yeah. If you had um, a magic wand, what would you wish for? That's a very good question. I think I'd wish for protection that's it yeah really? protection right. yeah not success and anything like that because I thought that's a bit too just protection because that's the one thing I worry about the most protection yeah are you going to have protected. it because once you grow with your experience you learn how to protect yourself you mm -hmm. see and it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be physical the mind is powerful when you know how to use it Mm. And the last in this game, you're going to learn. It's a roller yeah. coaster of emotions, of mood, you know, but you, you can overcome it. Many people mm. have achieved, so why can't you achieve? It's They're true. going through the same process as you. But it's remember, true. there's life after success. Mm -hmm. 
So remember, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever goes up has to come down. Yeah. You know, so... It has to. I, I, you know, it's a pleasure again for... Thank you for, you know, accepting the invite on the Dalton Ground. Yeah. Yeah, and that's okay. Looking forward to your next album. Not single, yes. album. Yes. So I want to see you on that stage and achieving that what the people know, if they don't know, they're going to know, and what you they know will. is achieved. 100%. In a way, with your success. Don, what would you what would you wish for? Oh, you're throwing back at me, what would I wish for? Yeah, what would you wish for? Well, I would wish for everybody to be on the same playing field and see mm. who's the real man. Because always people always have excuses and think that. Mm-hmm. I would like people to be on all on the same playing field and then mm. see who's real. Because everybody's yeah. always got you know, to say we should be doing that and doing that. And it's always talking from outside. But I'd love yeah. them to experience what we're experiencing, success and how hard it is. Because when you experience things, then you would respect people and appreciate it. Yeah. Easy from it's true. Outside. So I would like yeah. everybody to be on the same playing field and let's see what happens. Let's get yeah. it down. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Uh, so, I like yeah. That one. yeah. Thank you anyway for the feedback. <laughs> That's all right. You take care and have a nice day, yeah? You too, take care. Today's show is sponsored by Argon Utility Solution, your independent gas main service and meter installation specialist. To find out more about them, please click their link in the description below.